Hi, this is Joe and Keith, and we are here at the Skywalker Scoring Stage to give you a behind-the-scenes look into the making of Rumble and Fanfare. Well, here at Skywalker, um, it's a great facility, state-of-the-art equipment, amazing engineers, and just a great environment to really be creative as well as technically achieve the standard that you know that's important to film and TV and games. Decided to do a multi mic distance setup. So we did a close mic, mid mic, and far mic for both Rumble and Fanfare. And then with Fanfare, we actually also took it outdoors to the stadium where we recorded in a surround environment to really capture the, the reverb and the acoustic of a stadium. In this particular project, we're going for the symphonic sound, um, we're going for a big sound, and that required a large facility that was geared, that could handle acoustically um, this type of recording. When, once you get inside the studio, and you'll hear it in the samples once you have a chance to play the product. So our goal here ultimately is to first capture and record you know, individual small ensemble and large ensemble instruments, um, and then take these instruments, program them in a traditional sense, but then do what we're known best, which is blur the line between music and sound design, and, and morph these sounds to create these really strong and powerful cinematic instruments. There's several different types of people that could use this product, um, from the uh, you know the novice who who's a fan of the Blue Devils and just wants to actually load this thing up and actually have the Blue Devils at their fingertips. There's also um, you know people who are professional composers that actually score in Finale or Sibelius that want to uh, have really powerful mock-ups uh, of their scores. And then there's the uh, final production people who actually are using like Logic or Pro Tools or a major DAW. For Rumble, it's all about drums. It's all about drumming. It's all about big, large sounds. To do that right, we got Scott Johnson, who knows drumming better than anyone. So using Scott, we tapped into his creative ideas on how to really manipulate marching drums in a way that could become cinematic. So we had Scott work on loops, we had Scott work on different techniques, choosing different instruments, and tuning them only the way he knows how. We actually went to the Skywalker Studios, George Lucas Studios, um, here in the Bay Area, and uh, for a full day we did the percussion, we did percussion tracks. And I recorded three different snare sounds, you know, tuned differently, um, many multiple mallets and sticks on each drum at different volume levels and different rudiments. Same thing on three separate tenor drums, uh, sets of quads that were tuned differently, all five bass drums. And um, the software company, uh, Sample Logic, these guys are, they're insane. It's incredible. You listen to some of the stuff that, you know, how they morph the sounds that you can take a rudimental snare drum, for example, and change the sound into something else. And they're going, that, that was me? Really? That sounds pretty cool. <laughs> and uh, it, it was real exciting. Um, I brought in a lot of the drum line to record some of the stuff with us. We had five bass drummers in there, two tenors, three snares. And one of our tenor guys actually played cymbals because we needed a cymbal track. Fanfare is all about brass, and to do this, we sought out the Blue Devils once again and tapped into uh, John Meehan's wealth of knowledge. As brass caption head of the Blue Devils, John Meehan brought his expertise in instruments, brass, and brass design to help us develop what is all about sound, and that is to create an amazing cinematic library for brass. I started using Sample Logic's sound libraries about five years ago. One of the owners of the company is a Blue Devil alum. And they were great. The, the, the sounds and the samples that they were creating was just, they were awesome. They were huge. Um, it, it just made everything that I wrote just sound bigger. And I, when we started talking about creating a sound library with the Blue Devils, one of the hardest things to do is make, get that sound of standing in front of the Blue Devil horn line. What can give you that sound? Well, I thought if we could start to create a sample library with Sample Logic and Simple um, System Blue, they might be able to do something with those samples and it turns out that they were able to. We got to work with them in the process, a lot of work getting prepped for it on what needed to be recorded, how many people, uh, what kind of articulations through what parts of the instrument, what ranges. So a lot of work went into it. We finally got to go to Skywalker Sound and record everything and just being out there was incredible. But then to be on the sound stage and in the recording room with their engineer and having our members, we brought out both our staff to perform some of the solo instruments, but then we brought out groups of members 
to record ensemble instruments. We also recorded some samples at Rich Stadium in Buffalo, New York with the entire horn line. So we were able to get that sound of the Blue Devils. We did some space music, which the Blue Devils are very famous for, uh, dissonant kind of crunch chords with lots of varying dynamics. And they did an amazing job of taking those and morphing them into, when you go to movies these days, you hear these, these loops and these kind of great ethereal sounds. And they made these things out of what we played at Rich Stadium. And it's going to be an incredible tool, not just for arrangers of marching band and drum corps music, but film composers as well, that they can take these samples and use them in their symphonic works. Our goal at Sample Object is to continually grow to make better sounds, bigger sounds, something that's not been done before. So to do that, we sought out the Blue Devils. The Blue Devils are a world famous uh, drum and bugle corps, and at their disposal are some of the best designers for visual design, um, field design, music design, percussion design, arranging, um, brass, you name it, they do it, and they do it the best. John Meehan and Scott Johnson worked with them. We went into Skywalker Sound and recorded the sounds of the Blue Devils. And they developed all the exercises, all the notes, literally four days of intensive recording with our, our instruments, our performers, and our instructors. Sample Logic took it from there, the recordings, and produce the sound libraries. And they're not just sound libraries for marching band. You know, that is for sure you'll be able to hear the sounds of the Blue Devils and use it in your recordings, your arrangements, your compositions, but you're also going to have all unique morph sounds, cinematic sounds. So you're going to do much more than just be able to produce and hear your arrangements or compositions. You'll be able to use it on soundtracks and sample logic is into the uh, soundtrack world. So and they're, they're very, they're one of the most well respected uh, companies of their kind. I would say what has impressed me the most is the professionalism. Everyone, you know, we have five people out with markers and checklists. Just we're going through everything meticulously and and just getting everything at pristine quality levels uh, with little to no noise. Uh, it allows us so much freedom in the end to not only create and offer our users a traditional sample library but take those samples to the next level and make stuff that hasn't been heard before. It's incredible here. We're up in the middle of the trees in the middle of an upper Marin and we're setting up right now for recording tomorrow morning with uh, the sample logic team from New York. We're recording some uh, drum samples of five bass drums and quads and snares and we're going to record a few loops and basically loops are like two bars to four bars of that's one loop and we're doing about a hundred a whole lot of loops we're doing. We're going to bring the, the marching drums, these great tools of, of the trade, we're going to bring those to the film composers and we're going to, going to bring the sounds of the film composers to the educational market and to the drum corps world. So we're blurring not only music and sound design, we're blurring genres and we're really trying to, to meet all avenues. Not only are we giving you amazing morphed instruments um, that are perfect for film, TV and games, uh, but we're also exploring new boundaries and going into the world of traditional sampling. Uh, so, so both products actually have two different sections to them. We have the traditional, which gives you all the multi-sampled round-robin instruments. Uh, and then we have the morphed, which is you know, what we've done in previous products. So if you have any of our earlier products, you'll feel right at home. Um, this is probably the best control room in the country. For what we're doing, certainly it is. And uh, this is this is Dan. Dan's your engineer uh, today. One of hey. the, one of two. Uh, Leslie will be back in a minute. Welcome, she's, guys. She's the other one. My name is Leslie Ann Jones, and I'm director of music recording and scoring at Skywalker Sound. Our scoring stage here at Skywalker is a very unique space. It was designed by Ted Schultz, who designed Boston Symphony Hall. And uh, what makes it unique is that the walls actually are very hard surface made out of concrete, but then they have panels behind them that uh, all pull out uh, manually. So you can change the sound of the room from very live to very dead or anywhere in between. Uh, there are panels on the ceiling as well that um, are operated by motors so you can push a button and the panels roll out and uh, it allows us to record all different kinds of music uh, which is unusual. Most scoring stages are really great for orchestra but they're not really good for 
um, any other kinds of music, but we record all kinds of music here from, um, you know, 100 piece orchestras to choirs to classical records to rock bands, jazz groups, big band, um, all kinds of stuff. Uh, our control room is kind of unique as well in terms of scoring stage control rooms because we do so many different kinds of music that we uh, tend to have a lot of the kind of equipment that you would expect to see in a traditional recording studio. Uh, we have a lot of different microphone preamps. Of course, we have a very large microphone collection. We have a Neve uh, 88R analog console. We're recording uh, this, uh, these sound effects to Pro Tools at 24-bit uh, 88.2. We're doing great. It's day three. Um, we're deep in the trenches of recording uh, the new library. All the Blue Devils, all the staff, everyone's on, on target, and um, it's pretty awesome. To incorporate the best marching drum and bugle core sound, uh, we actually used the System Blue line of instruments uh, for both brass and drum libraries. For Rumble and Fanfare, user control was very important. I believe there's 43 screens of user controls uh, for each product, uh, really giving, giving you the ability and flexibility to sculpt and change instruments on the fly. I'm excited because these tools that we're creating are not only useful for you, but they're useful for us as composers. The excitement is, is putting these instruments inside the contact engine and coming up and creating new instruments that we've never heard before by realizing new sound in a new way. One thing that I really enjoyed with these products is that I can close my eyes when I hear these instruments and actually think I'm standing right next to the live performer. That's how pristine these sounds actually are. So what happens when you put the best performers in the best space with the best engineers using the best interface to date? Rumble and fanfare. Just got the final product, got to hear some of the stuff, and it's, it's, it's great. They did a great job. Man, we just got out of the studio, and we can't wait to show you what we've got in store. Here it comes. Sound libraries are forever.